Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our first uh, seminar and our first uh, evening, formal evening here. You all look wonderful. Um, tonight's speaker you may already have met is John Flint, who is the chief steward. Yes, that was the chief steward. Ah, uh, I seem to know him. And he has always treated uh, St. Bonaventure students magnificently. Thank him and Jeff for the dinner that you're going to have tonight. Before dinner, or oh, during dinner, you will have uh, several wines, particularly those of you who are seated at my table today. Uh, it seems a good idea before we launch ourselves into this six weeks of excellent food and excellent wine to talk about wine. Uh, John knows his stuff. Uh, He's not going to talk to you about how wine is grown or made because neither you nor he nor I really care. <laughs> um, we are much more interested in what comes out of the bottle than what goes into it. Uh, so pick up some tips. Um, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to St. Bonaventure's dear friend, John Flint. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Mike. Uh, yes, as, as Mike was saying, I've, I've done, been doing this for a, um, a few years now for the St. Bonaventure group. Um, and my first year I did it, I had a slideshow of how wine was made. And it was a kind of 20 minute chat about it. And there were, I was just saying to Mike just now, there were sort of glazed faces going, ah, oh, very interesting. Um, so I'm not going to bombard you with uh, details of uh, what goes on behind the scenes. So what I want to do tonight is um, I'll just tell you a bit about me and what I do here. And then I'm going to uh, talk about two wines specifically, um, which are on the tables in front of you. And I'll tell you about those in a moment. Um, and then I'm going to tell you, it may sound um, ridiculous, I'm going to tell you how to taste wine. There is a recognized method for wine tasting. Um, and you'll see on the tables, you've got color charts and you've got some uh, uh, bits of paper with descriptive notes on. So I'm going to explain my way through those. And then uh, what I'll do is I'll take you through the process of a sort of step-by-step -step, uh, way of tasting wine. And then we're actually going to do it. And then we're having a bit of a game as well, because I've got lots of cards here that I know describe the wines that we're about to taste. Um, and I'm going to see if you can help me by picking out words from the sheets in front of you to see if you can pick up what you're getting. So it's a bit of work involved. Um, right, so my name's John Flint. I'm the, uh, my official title is the Senior Common Room and Hall Steward. So basically I look after everything in, in our term time for our fellows and our tutors and our students um, to do with their meals, their uh, meetings, their conferences, um, and the fellows have their high table dinners, as you're going to have tonight, or, or not some of you will tonight, but all of you will eventually. Um, and they have private dinners and wine tastings and uh, all sorts of things that go on throughout the term. Outside term, I look after the running of just about everything. I mean, like you guys here for the summer and uh, weddings and parties and conferences and banquets and dinners. So that, that's basically what I do. One of my um, main roles, if you like, is looking after the college wine. We have in excess of 15,000 bottles of wine on site, um, all stored in lovely old cellars below the grounds. There's one, is there one this side? No, there isn't. There's one in Staircase 16. One on staircase 11 and one under my office. Quite nice. <laughs> I've got the red wine cellar under my office. Um, so that's kind of what I do uh, on a day to day basis. Uh, right, so wine, 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 wine. Does everybody like wine? Anybody not drink wine? Good. <laughs> I didn't see any hands. Um, for a long time, there's been, um, you know, I suppose a bit of wine snobbery about what you can drink, what you can't drink, what you should drink with certain things. It, 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 over the years, it, things have changed um, in that it really is a very general rule that you can drink what you like with what you like. There are some things that you shouldn't, really shouldn't do, but, you know, if you want to, go ahead and do it. There's no right or wrong about wine. Well, you know, it's always your opinion about whether you like it. That's an important thing to remember. Um, there used to be a lot of wine snobbery, say for example Chardonnay went completely out of fashion in this country a few years ago. Um, it, it's kind of come back in now. Um, sparkling Rosé went out, but that's back in now as well. 
Um, you know, it, it's, it's really up to you what you want to drink. But it's always handy to have a bit of advice about maybe which way to go in certain situations. Um, food, a very important part of my job is I choose the wines for the high table dinners that we have for our fellows. So I will get the menu from our chef and then look at what they're having. They, when they have their dinner, they have a, a wine with the starter, a wine with the second course, a wine with the main course, and a wine with the sweet. Um, so they have four wines at their um, evening meal. Um, and they often come two, three, four times a week. <laughs> so they, uh, they quite enjoy that. So I have to, uh, the college very kindly sent me on a, uh, a wine tasting course up at um, Oxford Brooks University. Um, I spent um, every Monday for eight weeks for about three or four hours up there um, trying to learn as much as I could about wine and, and what you uh, can do with it and how it should be treated. Um, so now I get to choose the wines that go with the uh, menu. So you know it, you can have four completely different wines throughout one meal. It's, it's really quite lovely. You don't have to have the same wine right through. So that's kind of me. Hello. Uh, right, so where should we start? Um, so what we've got tonight is we've got two wines um, which we'll be having later on as well. Uh, the first one is the white wine. Um, this is a Petit Chablis, uh, J. Moreau and Sons, AP. Uh, and this comes from, I, 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 was, I could have had slides for this, but I decided not to. Uh, this is the Chablis area of France here. I don't know if you can all see that, that little block there. Um, and they produce some, some fabulous wines. Chablis is one of my, my favourite wines. Um, it will go with lobster. It'll go with chicken. Um, I would hesitate to say things like prawns. If you're going to have, maybe, let, let's take a, a starter that we do a lot here, for example. Um, uh, we do king, uh, sorry, fried king prawns with lime, chilli and garlic. It's absolutely wonderful. Chablis wouldn't fit that, because the Chablis is going to be on the drier side of things. I would go straight to the Alsace region up here somewhere um, and go for a sort of slightly sweeter wine, which is going to cut against the chilli and the heat of that and the garlic and the oil of the frying. Um, so that's a, a good example of how two wines equally as good. With one would work definitely, the other one not so much. Um, it's a very lovely wine, this one. Um, it gets some very good rave reviews. The second one, um, this really is an extremely good wine. Um, it's, it, it's got rave reviews from all the critics. 2011, 2010 was actually better than this. 2011 is extremely good. That's a, a Bordeaux. It's a, a La Chenade, La Landa de Pomerol. And the Pomerol area is down here, the Bordeaux area. Um, it's got the river running through it. It's a gravelly, I'm doing terror now. It's a gravelly ground, which actually affects the flavor of the wine, um, as you will soon find out. Um, it's a small area, the Bordeaux area just down here, as is Chablis indeed, but they produce some of the world's greatest wines. They, they are really excellent. Um, I'm going to be talking about, uh, with, with, the, with the red wine particularly, you, when you taste it, when you smell it, when you look at it, which is what I'm going to talk you through in a minute, you are, you've, you've got to get your brain ready to start being sort of open to descriptive words and things that you might expect or maybe not expect things like leather, tobacco, cream. You know, these are those words. You, you're, when you're sniffing it, you will find, oh, hang on a minute, I'm picking up rotting vegetables. It's not a bad thing. I don't mean that in a bad way, because some, some wines do. You, you, it makes you think of that. You, you get that. Um, the white wine, I'm, we'll do that when I taste it, because it's, it's a wonderful experience, the white wine. Um, OK, so how do you taste wine? Right, there is a sort of a method to this that we use over here. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to look at it. Now you don't, uh, so don't do this yet. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just, I'll talk you through the steps and then we will all do it together. So you're going to look at the wine. That's going to tell you, um, A, what colour it is. Uh, but the colour of the wine is going to tell you a little bit about the wine instantly. So for example, on the red wine front, um, if you have a, a dark, ruby red wine, 
um, then you're pretty much sure it's going to be pretty a fruity wine. But that, that, that's as much as you're going to get really from looking at it. If it goes to the sort of tawny end of things, and if you look at the, um, the colour charts, in the middle you've got the sort of the deep red colour. That's going to be fruity, it's going to be fairly young. The lighter wines are going to be, tend to be younger. The tawny coloured wines, that means the wine's heading towards old age, it's getting older, which means it loses the fruit. And the fruit that you do experience in it becomes like aged fruit. Uh, like, you know, sort of figs and older, you know, prunes, things like that, rather than lush plums. Um, so the colour's going to tell you a lot. Secondly, you're going to um, look through the wine to see if it's clear. If it's clear, it's fine, that's good. If it's cloudy or there's bits in it, always bad, don't drink it. Um, that's going to tell you about the clarity of the wine. Then you're going to swirl it round. But sorry, go back a step. You're not going to do that first. You're going to sniff it once without swirling. That's going to just give you an idea of the kind of fruits that the wine's going to hold. And certainly it will give you an idea of what to expect. The brain starts racing then because it's getting things coming up the nose. Then you give it a swirl and have another sniff. And I guarantee you, you'll go, wow, because the second sniff, all those things that you, you got in the first one, are just like explode and become multiplied and, and much more accentuated. And you'll, you'll pick up other things as well. <laughs> all right, so what we're going to do. <coughs> first of all, I'm going to pour myself one. Um, the white wine. So first of all, we're going to look at it. So if you have a look at the, if you get the uh, one of your pieces of paper and turn it over, so you've got a white background, hold the piece of paper in front of you and just tilt the glass in front of the white piece of paper. And it gives you a very good idea of the colour. So you've got, you've got a white background and you can see through it. Now, looking at the all colour chart, what, what, what do you reckon that's going to be? Sorry. Yeah, hold the glass by the stem. I do apologise. Yes, always hold the glass by the stem. A, it doesn't warm the wine up because it's cold. So, I mean, let's have a look. I'm, I'm thinking, I don't know, what do you think? I mean, my initial reaction was to go for number one. Maybe heading towards number two. And you may be thinking crisp. It's going to be crisp. It's not going to be sweet. It's going to be dry. It's going to be what? Strong. <laughs> it could be strong. <laughs> okay. Now, give it a little swirl. And then when it's just finishing swirling, take another good sniff. That's completely different, isn't it? That's completely different. But it's, much, it's the same kind of things, but much more power. It's like, a, it's like walking through a, a field of, of, of cut grass with some apples around. Maybe a bit of lemon, citrusy, a bit citrusy. Okay, now, when you get to taste it, not good, <laughs> that's right, when you get to taste it, um, several things will happen. So you, you need to just take a sip and let it swirl around your tongue, cheeks, gums, and then you can swallow it, that's fine. Um, if it's uh, a dry wine, your mouth will um, react accordingly. So you, you know, your tongue will feel a bit sort of shriveled and the gums will feel a bit tighter. Uh, if it's sweet, you get kind of the opposite reaction and maybe saliva going, it'll, you'll, it'll, it'll release those. Um, but you, you just, just try and experience it and then swallow it and let, have, see how long the flavour of it goes on for afterwards. That's called the length of the wine. See how long that goes. That, it's a very good sign if you keep getting the flavour for a while. If it disappears quickly, it's not such a good wine. Okay, so let's have a little swirl, have a little sip, see what you think. Ah, oh, so nice. <laughs> okay, right, so can you feel that drying? On the, I'm going to get here and here, on the backs of my tongue. What, are you getting any other, any other flavours there? Have a look at your descriptive words and see if I can prompt you. It's um, it's certainly dry. It's a, I would say it's a medium wine. Light, maybe pear. One of the one of the people I read said it was it was a taste like a white pear. Does, does anybody not like it? Go on. Yeah, you are allowed. Absolutely, absolutely. That's what I'm saying. It's completely your choice. I think that I'm going to stick to more of the dry red. I think it's more natural. 
Isn't it? It's, it's extraordinary, isn't it? It, it, it? Can you feel your tongue sort of drying out as well? Yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It is. Yes, and right, right in the back there at the top of your, back of your door. I know, yeah, no, I know, I know. Now, you see, right, so part, part of the reason for that is a, a thing called tannins. Now, tannins are mostly to do with red wine because, well, I'll explain why now, actually. Um, tannins are uh, the thing that makes your mouth feel dry. That's, that's what the tannins do to your mouth. Um, with red wines, the um, tannins come from the skins and the seeds and the grapes, uh, sorry, the skins and the seeds and the stems of the wine. And with red wine, they're left in longer to get the um, color, obviously. Uh, so red wines tend to have more tannins. Some are softer, which is okay. But this has got a this is a little bit tannic, um, which is which is why it's doing that. Yeah, yeah. So alcohol is it's not massively high. It's twelve percent. That's more, <laughs> um, which is which is okay. That's a good sort of um, healthy level of alcohol in the wine. So uh, yeah, quite acidic. Another thing that's drying your mouth out, but it's it, that that that's a classic example of of a a, a Chablis. Um and it will go. So you see, that's what I was saying about the food. You, I wouldn't put this with spicy uh, fish. Um, this you would put with um, maybe a goat's cheese. In fact, I've got a list of foods here it does go with. Um, you're looking at things like, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so th th like smooth, soft cheeses that are that are not strong ones. Um, light food, chicken. It would go very well with chicken. It would go well with uh, white fish, but um, but I, I wouldn't put it with spicy food. It wouldn't match. That that's what I was saying about the Alsace. The Alsace wines are sweeter um, and sort of more floral, and they they suit better to the spicy side of things. Uh, exactly, yes. I mean, with, with, with the dryness of the wine, it's not going to work for spice because it's going to dry your mouth out and it's going to affect the food in a negative way, I think. Whereas the sweetness of like the Alsace wines and the lightness of them and the, and the sort of the floral of them um, is, going to, is going to combine with the spices in the hot food well. Um, I, think that, I think it's a good combination, whereas a dry wine is, is, is not going to work when you, on your taste and your palate. Um, well, uh, yes, yeah, so, okay, I see what you're going at now. Um, I mean, for example, in desserts, that's completely not the case. It, with, with, with a sauterne, for example, and a sweet pudding, you, you, your, your wine should be as sweet as the pudding um, that, you're, that you're having. Um, uh, but with, with the spicy, the, the opposite thing, yes, I think that, that, that would be the way I would go. So, so you're having a sweetish wine with a, a sort of a soury, spicy flavour on the, on the food you're having it with, yeah. Whereas with a, a, a very sort of delicate white fish, this is quite a sort of punchy white, and it would, that would work as well. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a kind of opposite thing. Yeah. Way. Yeah. 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 Y
we have um, a Fleur de Cliné Pomerol in our cellars, which comes from uh, the same area here. It's 2009, which was a fantastic year for all the wines in that area. Um, and it's just one of the, the best red wines I've ever tasted. It's wonderful. I might get you a bottle, Mike. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it's worth it. Well, is that, you see, when it gets paler, when wines get older, they get paler. Um, we have some port in our cellar here, um, dating back a very long way. Uh, and when we open them, there's lots of sediment, and the, 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 the liquid comes out almost a sort of clear rosé colour. Um, and it's, it's wonderful colour. Um, but that's because it's very old and it gets lighter and lighter as it gets older. So this is, I, I would say, four, I'd say bang in the middle there. Um, so it's, a, it's, well, it's 2011, so it's five years old. This wine would be drinking between now and the next five years. Ten years is, is okay for a wine to drink. So you can lay it down for ten years. So we're ruby red, we're dark red, uh, and now we're going to have a little sniff without swirling. And see, like, really try and see what you can pick up here. Well, okay, I'm getting... <sighs> Go on, shout things out. Yes, what, who? Who said that? Grapes, grapes. Okay, no, grapes is fine. Grapes is fine. Dark black grapes, though, black grapes. Go on, great, what else? What about, what about cherries? Anyone getting cherries? Uh, raspberry, black cherries, definitely black cherries. Yeah, it's got, yeah. So it, so we're looking at red fruits, dark red fruits. So red strawberry, strawberry. Maybe a little bit of strawberry. What about vanilla? A little bit of vanilla there. Not much oak going on in the in the nose. Not much oak going on. Yeah, a bit earthy. It's been it's been aged in oak barrels, which will give it that property. Huh. Nice to down. Blackberries, yes, yeah. So we're looking. At, so we're looking at dark fruits here. <coughs> okay, now, now just remember those dark fruits. Okay, now give it a swirl and give it a good sniff, and you will be surprised how fierce it is. Uh, see, it just takes off, doesn't it? Doesn't it really? Uh, yes, potpourri is perfect. Yes, it is. It's a whole. Imagine munching on a pot, potpourri pot. That's what you're going to get, isn't it? It's that. It's fabulous. Fabulous. <laughs> okay, right. Let's look at the legs of this wine, okay? Now then, remember what I said. If you, so if you swirl it around, they're very thin. Okay. <coughs> okay, right. Now, okay. Now I want to see what you're saying. Okay, so you can can you see the dribbles coming down the glass? Yeah, the tannin. Can you feel the tannins on that? Now you see, I like that. You feel your tongue curling up, <laughs> and your and your gums. Yeah. Yes. Well, done. it's very good. Yeah, it's like eating a piece of chalk. It's very woody. It's oaky. It's aged. It's, that's been uh, six years in a in a French oak barrel. So yes, it's going to pick up that that oakiness stuff from that. That's where it's going to get the tannins from. It's very, it's very nice. You like it, Mike? Yeah, it's lovely. It's lovely, isn't it? Yeah, that would work. <laughs> I mean, in fact, you can you can get a bit of chocolate from this. The other thing to remember is the length of the wine. How long do the flavours go on for? Now, this I think they go on and on and on. I'm still tasting it at the back of my mouth, back of my throat. And that's where you get a kind of chocolatey thing as well. Maybe black currant going on. Yes, if it has, if it has, if it, if it has a long flavour going on, it means it's a good wine. Yeah, yeah. And this is considered to be a very, very good wine by the, the people that know. <laughs> um, yeah, very nice. So, so you know, that's, that's how you, you taste wine, basically. That, that's the sort of the recognised route, and 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 as the the young lady here said, when next time you're in a restaurant and they come and ask you to taste the wine, do it. Don't don't just say, oh no, it's fine. Do it because sometimes you may get a problem with the, the cork in a wine, uh, which means that oxygen will get in there, and uh, over years that will turn the wine to um, well not or not vinegar, but it'll turn it awful. 
Uh, you can sometimes get problems with the corks in wine, um, and it won't be, you know, out, out of a batch, we've got 72 of these, um, so maybe you might find one or two where there's a cork problem, and so the wine will react with the cork, and that cork doesn't mean there is cork in it. Cork means it's reacted some way with the cork, or the cork is wrong or loose, and that has turned the wine bad. That's what corks mean. And you may get a corked wine brought to your table. It happens here. We, you, there's somewhere there's a, apart from tasting every bottle you open, and I'm not going to do that. <laughs> um, so sometimes we have taken out wine, and somebody's. You know, so it's not. And, it, and if you get corked wine, send it back. It's not. You know, they, they shouldn't be a problem with it at all. Um, people, restaurants, anywhere will recognise that it, it happens. Yeah, no. Right. Okay. I've got a. I've got a, a good story for this. Um, when I was sent to Oxford Brooks on my wine tasting course, <coughs> it was taken by a master of wine. A master of wine is the highest um, uh, um, level of, of achievement you could get in wine. Um, and, and he was brilliant. Uh, he, he could get it pretty much spot on most times, um, down to you know, sort of almost the individual person who picked the grapes, you know, that kind of that. He was that good. Um, that, that, that m no, not many people at all can do that. And a very good example of that is this. All the colleges in Oxford have a wine steward. And here, ours is Professor Justin Walk. Uh, he, 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 he and I, between us, um, uh, order and buy the wine. We go to wine tastings, taste wine, see what we like, and we order it in. Um, now, every year, he has him and all the other stewards have a, a wine steward's dinner. And um, I ran one of these for him a couple of years ago. And they have a different wine with every course for a seven-course meal. So they're having seven different wines. Uh, and they are tasting them blind. And they all try and get it, what, try and guess what they are. And they are absolutely dreadful. <laughs> <laughs> they, some, of them, yeah, some of them can get a, a part of it. You know, maybe, maybe it's a Chablis. Certainly if it was a, a Sauvignon Blanc. But you know, they tend to go for um, a slightly more obscure one. Um, and some of them are okay, but no, no, no. I think there are very few people in the world who can do it. There are some who can, um, but generally not, not that accurately. Uh, no, I think it's a skill that can be learned. If, but, but these guys, these, these masters of wine, um, the, the official sort of course, if you like, is seven years, um, where they do nothing else but drink wine. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> And where do you play? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think I'd like to do that job. My yeah. son, my son in, in one of his courses, they had to go through the wine tasting. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. And he managed to get like eight of the ten right. Well, that's very good. And the second part was just three of the ten right. Very good. But he was born in a white wine family. Yeah. Yes, I mean, some people aren't so suited to it, I think. Some people aren't suited to it, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I like to think I could identify a Merlot, for example, just by the colour, for one thing. It's purple, it's deep purple. Um, uh, I think I could identify a Sauvignon Blanc, Blanc Gold. Ha! <laughs> now I'm just trying to challenge myself. <laughs> um, but, but, but no more than that. Yeah, they, but they can get the year, they can get the vineyard sometimes. You know, it's, it's extraordinary. Yeah. So, but yeah, there are people who can do it. Um, okay. We're... Yeah, well, that's kind of it, guys. Oh, hello. Okay, right, chilling. Now then, we have, it's very interesting, actually, because we have a, a South African honorary fellow who comes here, Jeffrey Diego. Do you know Jeffrey? Yeah. Um, he, he's a lovely man because he gives us uh, uh, lots of wine for our cellars. Uh, he's a very nice old member. Um, but he is from South Africa, and he likes his red wine chilled. Um, now, it's a, it's a difficult one. You can drink white wine warm, but the particular flavours that you get in a white wine, so if you're looking at things like apple and things like grass and things, you know, that, kind of, that kind of green side of things, gooseberries, when they're, when they're warm, when you experience them warm in a drink, they're not pleasant. They're not, they're, they're not pleasant as in when they're cold. Um, red wine... The only thing that chilling red wine serves to do is to reduce the flavour that you get from it. 
Um, he does it because he, he, he likes it you know, cold from a very hot country, so that's, that's the only reason. Um, I wouldn't ever chill a white wine unless it was a sparkling Shiraz, which I have had, which is very nice. Um, but no, red, red wines wouldn't benefit from being chilled. White wines don't benefit from being warm um, because the flavours don't work at that temperature. It's a hard one to explain, really, but um, yeah. yeah. My mother used to work. Yeah. Uh, Damn. <laughs> Yes. Well, about the whole breathing thing. Yeah. It's oh, th th that's basically to do with 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 it. right. So when we're swirling, that's getting oxygen into the wine, which is releasing the flavours, and it's also moving the molecules. When you when you decant wine, it does exactly the same thing. Um, and it, it, it just brings out all the underlying flavours and, and makes it better. Decanting? Uh, sorry, yeah, that's a good point. Okay, so decanting, we serve some of our wines out of, not out of the bottle, but out of a, a glass, um, clear glass bottle. Um, and the reason for that is ports always decant. Um, the reason for that is that um, it could be, for example, sediment. You get sediment in some wines you get sediment in most ports. Um, so we have to sieve them uh, through a, um, quite often a cloth to get the really finest bits out. And so you just get the clear liquid in the bottle. That's the reason for decanting. To make sure you're getting... Uh, yeah, well, well, uh, well, sorry, no, it, it is a sediment thing, but also the process of doing it is like swirling, where you're aerating the wine, releasing the flavours. Once, once you've opened the bottle and decanted it, you need to drink it fairly swiftly, a couple of hours tops, and, and, you're, and it's going to start going, um, because the more it's in contact with oxygen, the more it sort of degenerates, if you like. So um, once you've opened it, drink it. <laughs> yes, questions, I like this, yes. Right, okay, so, it, yeah, okay, right, so you would, for example, if this bottle of wine had been badly corked or wrongly corked and air had got in, um, that would turn the wine off. What you might see is the cork raised above the edge of the bottle here. Uh, we sometimes get bottles like that, and if you see that, um, what I do is I open it and taste it straight away. And you, you pretty much every time, if the cork's raised, it's going to be wrong to some degree. Um, the other thing is if you get mould here, you can get, uh, when you take the foil off, you can get maybe sometimes green on the top of the cork. That means that you, um, there's dampness around the bottle, which isn't going to be good. But it also means that it may, uh, air again, that may be getting into the bottle and dampness getting out of the bottle, which is causing it to mould. So I basically use your eyes. If you, if you see those kind of things on the bottle, Taste it just before you start pouring it out um, and see if it's all right. Okay, if you've, if you've got a, I mean, you're allowed to ask for the cork in a restaurant. Lots of, lots, lots of places you can do that. Um, so you can ask to see the cork, which you can do. Um, right, a classic uh, identifier for a corked wine is musty. It's a must smell. So it's, that, it's, it's, like, off, it's like damp cardboard, that kind of thing, or off. Sort of rotting wood. So if you, if you get that smell, uh, you can say to the, the, the wine waiter, I think this is corked, you need to change it. And they will, they should. Yeah. But that, that's the classic sign. Correct. Uh, yes, yeah. Yes. And the, yeah, don't be afraid to, to send it back. Yeah, yeah Kate. I'm oh, sorry. <coughs> okay. The um, the, right. So, holding a white wine glass, you should really hold it by the stem because if you clearly, if you're going to hold it like that, it's going to warm it up. So that that's the only reason you would hold it that way. The shape of the glass um, is, again, to do with 
aeration and getting oxygen to it. The bigger the bigger the surface area gets oxygen, the more release you're going to get of the flavours. Um, but don't leave it too long because they will go the other way and you'll lose the flavours. So uh, that that's the only reason for that one. Yeah. yeah. So they are still fine trying. So they are. You are hopefully expanding the scope more and more. Um, yes, pretty much so. I mean, France is obviously the classic wine growers region. Um, but the, uh, the New World wines are, 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 some of them are stunning. I happen to think there's some brilliant New Zealand wines and some Australian wines. Chile are producing some wonderful stuff. Um, but yes, basically, the, so you, could, you could apply the same rules to any of the wines, yeah. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, we, you see, I, 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 yeah, I don't know. Right, tradition, traditionalists like the cork. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a, it seals it well, certainly. Screw caps do the job just as well, is my opinion. People may disagree with that. This Petit Chablis is a screw top, um, but it's still a pretty good wine. So, um, you know, it's, it's very nice. Um, my opinion is I think it will go that way pretty much universally for most wines now. Yeah. Mm, debatable. No, I would say no. It's, it's, it's such a small area of it and such a wine. Yeah. And although it can be, like I say, if the, if the cork is not fitted properly, um, then it can, you get air in it, then it can react with the wine and the cork together. Whereas with screw cap, that's not going to happen. So you'll get less corked wine, certainly. The wines won't go off as much. What do you think, Mike? Are you a, are you a cork man or a screw cap man? Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it yes, it does. I know what you mean, yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> That's kind of the done, guys. I mean, have you got any more questions? I'm, um, thank you ever so much. Yeah, that was really uh, good of you to ask lots of questions. Well done, thank you.